So guys, what if I told you once upon a time Elvis had a concert right there? Would you think I'm crazy? Probably would. Today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, you're gonna find out about it though. Go get your popcorn ready. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so I'm showing you an aerial of the Olympia Theater. Elvis performed here in the 70s at the Olympia and in 1957. 1957 he was here. Now I'm zooming in on this parking lot area. You see this building? See like a little edge coming out of the building? Here it is today. This helps me line up everything. This building was here in the area. This was the parking lot that you see all these cars at the concert parked at. The arena, the Olympia Arena, was right here when Elvis performed in Detroit in 1957 and 1970. Now it's a um, National Guard Armory building on the location, so we're not going to be able to stand there, but I'll walk over here on the sidewalk. That building was right there. Once upon a time in Elvis's life, right here in Detroit. And this is on Grand River Avenue. And this is Grand River and where the cars are is McGraw. So it's at that intersection. A little bit more history. I'm gonna show you some great pictures of Elvis at this show and read you an article. How about that? All right, guys, so I am showing you this picture uh, at Elvis's concert. Look at all the crowd walking to the Olympia uh, Arena. That cool Olympia sign, which I know where it is. Luckily, the sign still exists, and maybe, maybe it'll end up on this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Got to watch to the end. Don't leave now. But anyhow, where was this picture taken at? It was taken right here in Detroit, Michigan. Here I am all these years later in 2021. This was that cross crossing that you see in the picture. That's the road that you see in the edge of the picture. All this was the parking lot. About right here, about right here over here where the sign is, is where that uh, arena, probably a little bit in front of that sign is where the arena started at from this viewpoint. So that kind of gives you an idea that the arena ran all of that front part of the land way, way back. I'd say way, definitely way past this building that's on the land now. So we'll walk back there and just get a shot from that angle. But yeah, that picture was captured here so that Olympia sign literally was right there in the 1970s when this building was here. So Elvis, Scotty, and Bill took a trip to Detroit, Michigan and played inside this arena, the Olympia Stadium, on Sunday, March the 31st. And here's a picture of Elvis on stage. He was wearing the gold LeMay jacket with the black pants. He didn't like to wear those gold LeMay pants, but he would wear black with that gold jacket. He rock and rolled inside this stadium, guys, 66 years ago. Check out Elvis here backstage before the show, hanging out in the locker room. You may have seen this picture before. It was captured in this building on the land that I am showing you in this episode. And if you want to learn about what Elvis was like in 1956 and how the crowd reacted to him, well, enjoy this. As you can hear in the background, Elvis Presley has just made his entrance into the big arena here packed with 11,000 kids. As you can hear, they're screaming kids. Flash bulbs are popping all over the place. The kids are going crazy. Elvis is just standing there. He hasn't said a word yet. Bill Rady is down there in that messed up place with a microphone. Come in, Bill Rady. He walks up to a microphone and talks, and people can't hear a word he's saying. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of flash bulbs going off in this place. It looks like there's an explosion. Every kid here must have a flash bulb, and every kid is shooting it off. Bang, 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 bang. There are flash bulbs, people screaming. The 
place has moved in closely to the edge of the stage now. Mr. Presley hasn't said anything that anybody can hear. He just wiggled his left shoulder and brought forth a new much burst of applause from the people. Now he's crowding into the microphone. He's got his lips almost inside of the mic. There seems to be some question as to whether or not it's working. Frankly, we don't think the audience here cares whether that microphone is working or not. All he did was wave. He waved and jumped up in the air, and ladies and gentlemen, it was like setting off a charge of dynamite in this place. We'll repeat that costume he's wearing. He picks up his guitar now, his famous old beat-up-looking guitar with a match, a piece of match for a front. Here this man has a million-dollar operation, and he puts a little match stick in his guitar to repair it. He still hasn't had a chance to say a word to this audience yet. He's got one hand on the microphone. He's standing out there at the mic with his guitar, his yellow jacket with those sequins just is shining away in these flashing flashbulbs. At the present time, the crowd is very oily. All the eyes are noisy. Everybody today has commented on the fact that these kids have come in here, they've taken their seats, and a lot of them are with their parents, and those are the first words that the kids have said. Maybe you could hear them on the PA, but you can certainly hear the kids' reaction. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this since the days that Rudy Valet came in with a megaphone and crooned at the Cap Fisher Theater a long, long, long time ago. He said the crowd is extremely orderly here, except for these popping flag bulbs, which are still going on. There hasn't been a fifth of a second, I don't think, that a flag bulb hasn't gone off since Presley's been on the stage. He's bathed in a yellow spotlight. There he goes singing, but he's not going to get into the song, as you can see. So... The crowd just won't let him go into it. He's starting to sing now. Maybe they will quiet down. And, uh... <laughs> he's singing, he's pulling, he's singing, ladies and gentlemen. But the people can't hear a word at the song. They paid $3, $4, $5 to get in here. But if they can hear a word of what he's saying, my name is Jay Bagley Finnegan. He's actually into his song right now, ladies and gentlemen. That crowd is still going on. The crowd is still making as much noise as they did when he first came in here. He's standing there playing with that microphone, singing to it, swinging around the stage, flexing a knee here, flexing a toe there, and the song is just about drowned out. He raises his right hand. The little lady just dropped her glasses here, but that didn't seem to make any joke. If you want to look at the end of that camp, well, that... Elvis just finished up the finale to that one song with a real rousing rock in the air. He was wiggling around and shaking the guitar and hit a high crescendo. How'd you like that song? Here he's hugging up the tonight. The young lady almost passed out here on our right. He just had it, ladies and gentlemen. She had it. This is the one that makes him weak. Oh, the of 11,000 kids screaming, yelling their heads off is terrific. Bill Raby is still on the floor of Olympia with his portable tape recorder. He's moving along the aisle, quite close to the stage now, uh, interviewing as he goes along, trying to talk to these fans one by one, despite the terrific noise. Presley fans are still going at it. But let's return now to the floor of Olympia. Come in, Bill Raby. Everybody's not listening, saying, oh, you're a shot. Why are they shouting? Okay, then. Why do you think all the people are shouting here when Elvis is singing? Most of them are either half crazy or not. Half crazy. Oh, singing. It's now 20 minutes and four. This man's been on the stage for about a half hour. You can hear the crowd is still alive. Wiggle, he's shoulders a little bit. He's got that microphone and a death grip, ladies and gentlemen, and it... God loves it. They love this fellow here for some reason or other. They can't tell you why they like him. That burst of noise, ladies and gentlemen, is for the song that I think the average American public identifies as Mr. Elvis Presley. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. And that hound dog song pretty much is finale, folks. The crowd here in Olympia has been raising it up. He's worked him up to a real high fever pitch. The police are moving out now to farm his police next door to get him out of this place. He's going to make one of the fastest exits you've ever seen. And we're going to do the same thing. We're getting out of here. Come on, boys. So that is what Elvis was like if you went to a concert in 56. That's what you would have heard. All those screaming girls that just loved a guy. They loved Elvis. I don't know how he did it. I don't know. I mean, man, Elvis must have felt great. Here's a picture of Elvis on stage from Olympia Stadium. With the officer is looking on. How would you like to have that seat for that concert back in the day here in Detroit, Michigan? 
Now check out this article that I found. It says Elvis is back. So he returns in the 70s. Elvis Presley is coming to Detroit April the 6th, the first time in over a decade that the rock and roller has ever repeated an appearance outside of Las Vegas. So this was April 6, 72. Elvis returned to Detroit, I believe, in, in 1970 when he returned back on tour. Presley reportedly was elated by the reception his show at Olympia Stadium 18 months ago received. Since he returned to concert performing two years ago, the Tennessee legend has toured twice. Detroit will be the only city he has returned to for an encore. So I guess that's a possibility at this point in 1972 that Elvis hadn't returned to his place twice. I'd have to really dig for that one. But it said last time it took only two days for the 15,000 tickets to sell out. Tickets for this April show will be sold mainly by mail through the Olympia box office. Three prices are available, $5, $7.50, and a $10 ticket. I think I would uh, splurge and put the 10 down. Now, I found this picture from inside Olympia Stadium in the 70s of Colonel Parker taking care of business before the show. There is the Colonel. Then this is a picture I found of the sign out front of Olympia Stadium. It says preseason hockey Saturday, September or something. It said New York versus the Red Wings. Elvis Presley played tonight at 8.30 p.m. I found an article that really captures what that concert was like in 1970. It says, The concert was held in Olympia Stadium, a huge indoor area, generally used for ice shows, hockey games, and other road attractions. The concert was to start at 8.30, so we arrived at the Olympia Stadium around 6 o'clock. Now, you must picture that this is a huge structure with enough seats to hold 14,500 people. But tonight, there were well over 17,000 packed into the Olympia Stadium. People were standing five and six deep all the way around the arena. You could not fit even a small puppy in. We were sitting in the first row, just to the right of the stage. At 8.30 exactly, the lights began to dim and electricity filled the air. The band was on stage with the sweet inspirations preceded by the Hugh Jarrett singers. Each did three numbers. Then it was stated that there will be a short intermission. Finally, the lights went down once again, and the thunderous beat of the That's All Right Mama began. Elvis walked out on stage looking better than ever in a white jumpsuit with gold chains all over and a red scarf tucked inside the shirt. Over 17,000 people were packed into the arena and Bedlam broke loose. It was a constant mass of screaming. You couldn't hear a word of That's All Right Mama. The flash cubes were going so strong that the stadium was turned into one giant strobe light. The Beatles, Stones, Jones, nobody had ever received this kind of reception in Detroit before. Elvis immediately went into I Got a Woman and the screaming intensified even more to a fever pitch. The PA system was now working perfectly and every word Elvis sang came out crystal clear. Elvis tagged a little bit of the uh, Amen chorus on the end of I Got a Woman and then went into his now famous halftime ending which really tore the house down. Elvis then introduced himself saying good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm Johnny Cash and went into a verse of I Walk the Line. Elvis imitated Cash's monotone perfectly on this. Then he threw his guitar down. The screaming continued in a constant tide of sound, but Elvis continued. Next came the exciting Suspicious Minds. Elvis really got into this one. Elvis went immediately into You've Lost That Loving Feeling, and then he sang Poke Salad Annie. During the intro, he turned his back to the audience and literally ripped open his suit, tearing off the chains and pulling his scarf over his bare chest. Then the way he did this really cracked up the crowd. Poke Salad Annie was faster than the one on stage version and had a lot more show to it with the drum beats and tore the place apart. During the song, the music toned down a little and Elvis called out Jones and did some Tom Jones motions. The place went wild. Then he held up his hands to say, wait, and yelled out, Humperdink. He then cuddled the mic and gave that Hunkerdink look. More screams. Then he called out Glenn Campbell and did that little two-step thing Campbell always does, yelling out in a higher-pitched voice, Hot damn, y'all. It was really funny. Then he pointed to himself and said, Me. Elvis was all over the stage with his movements. It was incredible. He did the extended ending just like on the album. The crowd was going insane. After the song was over, Elvis just fell down backwards on the stage. The fans in the stadium went wild. He was laying flat down on his back and saying into a mic, Man, I'm tired. I think I'll do the rest of the show like this. Elvis then said, thank you. You're a fine crowd here in Detroit City. Thank you very much. He then went into Can't Help 
fallen in love. During this song, he took off a scarf and threw it towards this little girl, but about seven older girls died over her and retrieved it. As soon as the song was over, Elvis ran quickly off the stage into the arms of about 50 officials. The first two people to greet him were his father and Colonel Parker. The band went directly into a rocking instrumental, and an announcer came on and told the crowd, thank you for being such a nice audience. Elvis has left the building. So Olympia Stadium was used for all kind of sporting events throughout its time here in Detroit. The Detroit Pistons actually played a few seasons when they first joined the NBA here in Olympia Stadium. Also, the uh, Detroit Red Wings called this place home, and I believe they won seven Stanley Cups inside this stadium, and I believe they played for 11 of them. 11 Stanley Cup Finals was played here at Olympia Stadium. This is legend Gordy Howe having a fight one evening during a hockey game inside the building. This building's in the aerial. I'm going to zoom in for you now, showing you there is that building. So that helps me line up where the building actually started at. It was before this building. So that puts it over there about where that sign is, that red sign that I'm pointing at. So it was there. So the building ran through the middle of the armory building that is on this land now. And it ran all the way to where these trucks are parked now. So Elvis, that footage you saw earlier, was there and around that area, captured once upon a time in his life. He played a show right here in Detroit, Michigan. I hope you enjoyed this effort. The spy guy and I took care of business and traveled all the way to Detroit, Michigan to film this episode. And we hope that you enjoy riding along with us in the Grey Ghost as we capture this Elvis history. Check out this old building here in front of us. We're about to go explore that for another episode. But if you do enjoy riding around with us, then you need to make plans to be in Memphis, Tennessee this Elvis Week 2022. And, uh, well, join us for this. This Elvis Week 2022 at the Tiger Man Karate Dojo and Museum, we will celebrate the 45th anniversary of the incredible life of Elvis Presley. And the Spa Guy in Glow Trotting with Trey invites you to join us on tour. We have three different tour options for you to choose from. We have the History Elvis 101 Tour. That's for people that really don't know much about Elvis but would like to learn more about the real Elvis Presley. It's an hour and a half tour and you will drive around with a spy guy and myself and we will take you to some early locations and tell you stories from the actual place. That's on August the 9th and August the 13th. We also have two three hour tours that you can choose from. We have the part one tour on August the 10th, 12th, 14th, or 16th. Join us for a three hour tour of Memphis, Tennessee to over 35, yes, 35 Elvis locations. We will go to these locations, explore a few of them, and you will learn stories at all of them that have been researched by myself and the spa guy. And then after you do part one tour, join us for the part two three-hour tour of Elvis locations. Where is this cool Elvis spot? You will find out on August the 11th, 13th, 14th, or 16th. We will take you to over 50, yes, I said 50 Elvis locations on this part two tour. And it may run even over three hours. Just have to wait and see. So guys, get your tickets in the link below of this video. And wait, don't just take my word for it. Hear what people that have already joined us for the three-hour tour has to say. It was great. You're going to see a lot of places that you're never going to see on another tour. I think the only one place that anybody knows about would be Lauderdale Lakes or Quartz. Um, but every place else is, unless you've been watching the Spa Guys videos, you have never seen any of these places. And there are a couple of surprises. So definitely, we always love Elvis. It was very interesting. We learned a lot of stuff yeah. that we didn't even know. Saw places. We didn't know where they were. Didn't even know what happened in Memphis. So it was very nice. I loved it. I thought it was very interesting. Everybody lived in Memphis should go through it. A lot of sites I lived here all my life, and many sites I've never seen, even you of. Oh, I loved it. I uh, enjoyed all the history, the things I never knew about before he was uh, famous, and uh, that's what I wanted to know. That all the inter inter things that uh, he had done before he got big, and uh, just all the things that led up before he uh, got big. Well, it was great because we've seen a lot of the videos from your show and from uh, from his show, and then to see it to come to life 
But not only that, having y'all tell the, the stories and adding to it that just made it real to us. This is my second time touring the museum. Uh, we came the first week it opened, and you've added some stuff already since then. And, and the admission is crazy cheap, and it's just a good experience. And I would say anybody in Memphis has not done Memphis unless they come here. So guys, be sure to get your tickets today while they last. When they sell out, they're gone. The Spy Guy and I invite you for a three-hour tour of Elvis Memphis locations. You, after riding around with us, will see Memphis, Tennessee the way Elvis Presley saw it once upon a time in his life. We are looking forward to meeting you, hanging out with you, and taking you to some cool Elvis spots. Get your tickets today. All right, guys, so you can barely make out the M and P. Of the Olympia. There's the A down at the bottom. The L. Trying to make it where you can see it. You see the M. I don't think I can see any more of it. But those signs were on the facade of the Olympia Theater when Elvis played 1957 in, that, in the 70s. I think he played here about four or five times. No doubt. Like I said, stick around to the end. You never know what I'm going to put on Glow Triding with Trey. So now you know where this Olympia sign is. It's at the Caesars Arena where the Detroit Pistons now play in downtown Detroit, Michigan. Just right down from the Fox Theater. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey to stay updated with every new Elvis episode that I upload each Tuesday. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. You just stay updated with every time I upload a new video. Until next time, like I always say, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.